Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Saturday afternoon here in Australia and the market is up back above that $2.3 trillion mark. And some very interesting things are happening on the market. So Bitcoin, I mean, it's continually kind of breached over that 50,000. Now we're at 50,458. We're just waiting to see if this can hold. I mean, it's looking pretty nice at the moment, but we'll have to wait and see. ETH flirting with, you know, 4,000. Things are looking quite nice at the moment. So BTC dominance dropped a little bit, so down to just below 41%. Volume down a little bit, but it's the weekend. That's to be expected. And gas prices, I mean, they're just going absolutely crazy at the moment. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with the reason why Solana is pumping so hard. And even Cardano, you know, Ada's pumped so hard. It is simply the gas prices are absolutely ridiculous. And again, this hard fork, you know... <laughs> It's kept them down a little bit, but look, nowhere near enough. And that ETH 2.0 literally cannot come soon enough. The average user at the moment, and we're not even in like the full crazy part of the bull market right now. It's just a lot of big players playing around. The average user couldn't come in and use Ethereum. So other than buying it and holding it uh, on an exchange, that's about all they could do. Trying to send it anywhere would literally just cost way too much. It would absolutely annihilate them. But anyway, moving on. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, generally up. So again, you know, 1.9%, 2% upwards movement, which is quite nice. But we can see there have been some uh, coins that haven't fared so well. Uniswap, probably a little bit of FUD there, you know, with the SEC looking to come after them. Although I don't think that's going to affect the price too much at the moment. That's, you know, could still be quite some time away. But what's been the best mover then? What's done, you know, really well in the last 24 hours? Bitcoin Cash out of nowhere, near 30% gain. Phantom, uh, a nearly 30% gain. And then Axie Cash, Litecoin starting to make moves. So a lot of coins that we haven't seen for a while. T Fuel, there we go, up 10%. Uh, Solana just continues to go. How much higher can it go? I don't know. Filecoin, uh, ICP, EOS, NEM. Look, some really nice moves. A couple of really good double digit ones. And then we got some high single digit ones. What about losses, though? Then what hasn't performed as well? There we go. So AVAX having a bit of a pullback. Arweave, again, they pumped really, really hard. Uh, Holo, as we spoke about. Uni, you know, whether that's got anything to do with the possible, well, the SEC case that has been filed or not. We'll have to wait and see. Terra Luna, Tron, Amp, Compound. But no real major losses. I mean, 8% will hurt a little bit. But if you've been in Avalanche for more than 24 hours, you're probably still doing all right. Uh, you know, most people I'd say hopefully have been in for the last couple of weeks or so and they have made some great gains. So you've always got to have that little kind of correction uh, at some stage and maybe this is it for them. All right, what I want to do is have a look at the Bitcoin chart though. Almost as I sort of predicted the other day, I did expect that Bitcoin would probably just keep basically traveling along this line, this upwards trending channel that we've been in for so long. And that's exactly what it does. We kind of dip below and, you know, get a bit of a, uh, a shake out, you know, to get people worried. And then we quickly just pull back in. And look, it's bouncing off this perfectly. I've had this line in, this channel trending for ages. So it's not me trying to make this channel fit this chart. It's the chart fitting the channel, as simply as that. It is, you know, perfectly, perfectly, pretty much perfectly. A little bit of a dip out, perfectly. Dip below perfectly it is just following this upwards trending channel so that is what i'm looking for and even if it breaks out and breaks below again really as long as we don't go below forty two thousand, i'm not overly concerned and again even if we did go below forty two thousand, if it was just like a quick kind of flash wick to you know maybe down to thirty nine thousand dollars or something like that and then we come back up here and start to tick our way up then again i'm not too worried but in saying that this is the level that I'm looking for. We have to break that kind of $52,000 level and have a proper break out of it and probably even a retest. So come above, come back down, retest 52,000. Again, you know, maybe somewhere around the 14th of September. This is just going by this chart before we then start to make our next move up. And whether it's a big move up or again, we just keep ticking along here for quite some time, that really is the big question, isn't it? We're all waiting to see. But as long as Bitcoin's just slowly ticking up and not doing anything drastic either to the upside or to the downside, 
altcoins are going to flourish. When Bitcoin is positive, altcoins are positive. When Bitcoin is negative, altcoins are negative. So that's why this was this big, uh, crazy altcoin season we had here. Because even though Bitcoin was volatile, it was up and down, and it was basically just hovering around this, you know, you could even rain, 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 excuse me, range it off to roughly where it is now, around 50,000. But we we're going from 50,000, we dipped down a little bit low to 42,000, but made it up to 64. And so it was just all over the place here. But, you know, roughly sort of stable, altcoins went silly. But also when Bitcoin was doing this, altcoins were following suit. They were just getting outpaced by Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin gets on a big run, it is going to suck some of the liquidity out of all those altcoins. They'll still go up. Bitcoin will just drag everything else up. That's what it does. But when it's just doing this kind of, you know, a bit sideways action or slowly ticking up, it is dragging those altcoins. And particularly if it's ticking up slowly, altcoins just seem to do really, really well. It's people, the traders out there, waiting to see a market move and then to jump on the back of it. And I'm going to go and show you some coins that I think could be primed and ready to go. Never financial advice though. It is just my personal opinion. But one story I think was really important. So we've all heard about this Ethereum uh, burning, you know, the EIP-1559, and everyone was talking about they're waiting for uh, Ethereum to go deflationary. It just happened. More Ethereum has been burned than minted in the past 24 hours. Now that's not to say this is going to last, but I think this might be the first time. Finally, more Ethereum was burnt due to EIP-1559 that was actually minted. And that is because Ethereum is so busy at the moment. So many people are jumping on it. It's just burning more gas than it's uh, paying out uh, in minted, you know, newly uh, fresh, freshly created Ethereum. So the more busy it gets, the more Ethereum that gets burnt. As it starts to slow down and nothing's happening, then more Ethereum will be made to get people to buy it and get the price going up. So very, very interesting. I, I shudder to think what it might be like when the real bull market kicks off. But again, the gas prices are still horrendous at the moment. So that is a problem. No average user can use Ethereum at the moment. And that is really, really sad. You try and go to OpenSea or something and, you know, mint some $3 NFT and, you know, pay some silly kind of gas fee, like, you know, 150 bucks or something like that. I don't even know exactly what it is, but I know it's super expensive. That's pointless, isn't it? Unless that $3 NFT suddenly turns into 3 million, great, awesome. How many people are going to have the money to do that? Not many just the kind of the high end of town are playing in that space at the moment all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you a couple of coins that i think might be primed and getting ready for a breakout now it doesn't mean they're going to do it right now doesn't mean they can't go a little bit lower i'm just going by what the charts are showing so matic let's have a look at it versus the dollar this is where it's been so it was traveling sideways for a really really long time so we can go there, had its pump up, and then was just sideways for a really long time. So what was that? 17th of May 2019 to around about the 3rd of November 2020. So a while, kind of sideways, choppy up and down. Then it really started to make its move though. And so what we've done is, again, I've charted this line. I spoke about it the other day. It's just a line that's roughly through the middle but gets kind of the most touch points. Now you could drag this line if you wanted to and you could go, oh, well, that's where the most sort of touch points are. Yep, you absolutely could, but it's a lot of chopping and changing all around it. There's not a whole lot of uh, bouncing off it kind of directly. Whereas, and again, you can make this any way you want, but for me, I just marked it like this and I said, that to me sounds around about right using it as support numerous times, resistance numerous times, resistance, support, almost support, almost support, not quite support, a little bit far off, but now resistance, 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 resistance. And again, you could even try and pull it down in there if you want, maybe. This is just a rough guide. So for me, I'm going just about there. And to me, this is looking like Matic could be a really good buy at the moment. Against the dollar, it is under its sort of average uh, average uptrend. Now again, 
There is no guarantees. What I say about TA and charting in that, and pretty much everything really, it's all good until it's not. This won't last forever. Eventually it'll be invalidated, particularly we go into a bear market. Suddenly things become very, very different. But I don't believe we're in a bear market. And what we've got is a lot of sideways action from Matic just against the dollar since the 11th of August. So we are nearly a month of sideways action in a bull market, considering how, you know, look at these kind of moves. We did have a, what was this, 11th of March to the 26th, a month and a half, and then looked what happened. We got this big move and then we obviously get that correction and again look where this uh, comes down to roughly where old support and resistance has been before and now this is coming down to roughly where old support and resistance has been before look at it touched it almost perfectly there touched it almost perfectly there from this little red thing here and again we got this little green thing here that wasn't too far off and again none of this is exact science but from this I think Maddox looking pretty good, but I don't want to just go by the dollar value. All right, what can we then do? How about Maddox versus ETH? Here we can see this is Maddox trading sideways for a really long time, and this is where it started to outpace ETH, excuse me. Up, little correction, and look where the correction came to. Roughly, almost, where an old high was. Old resistance becomes support. Then again, come down here, look at that. Support becomes old resistance. This is a pattern that plays out over and over and over again. It's not always exact, but it's thereabouts. Has a big move up, comes down. Old support and resistance. This was used as support and resistance over here, but this now becomes the support over here. Another move up. Now look at this, comes down and starts to use old support and resistance and again these lines are just there about they're not micro millimeter you know satoshi gas gray exact they're just an indicator bang came down had its big parabolic move came down this is the dead cat bounce came back up have ever an excited nut and then started to roll over but now look what we can see happening support 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 old sort of resistance has now become support now please don't get me wrong this could easy come back down and want to test down it here and maybe want to test down it here and maybe even want to test down it here who knows but it does look like this has been support a couple of times we'll have to wait and see whether this holds but for me i'm willing to kind i'm willing to kind of you know it's kind of like taking a bet i'm not a gambler and i don't really bet but what I am look at here is I go, right, if I buy Matic here, it's got all this upside and only probably maybe here to here downside because I don't believe we're in the bear market yet and this is a really good project. So the upside is a lot more to the possible downside. And if it continues to go down, because I like Matic, I'll continue to buy it on the way down. And again, I think it'll probably get to a roundabout here because what we can see support sort of resistance support sort of resistance i mean more resistance than anything but this is just a confluence line and so really i would be thinking that my downside would really be only from where we are to maybe down around about here before i would expect it to make an upside and this is against ethereum and ethereum has been outpacing bitcoin but let's check it on bitcoin okay matic on the us dollar peg feels like it's undervalued at the moment. Matic against ETH is currently bouncing off old support resistance lines and holding steady. And we know it's been traveling sideways again against the dollar for a little while. So could it just be building a platform? Let's have a look at it against Bitcoin. Now what I want you to do is look at what it's done before. Hit a high, came down, used old support as resistance. Came up, came down, used old support as resistance. Came up, came down, used old support, uh, sorry, old resistance, I'm saying it the wrong way around, old resistance as support, and had a really long sideways kind of motion where it was below, it was above, it was below, it was above, it was below, and then boom, and again, very similar kind of thing again. Here, it has found its, this point as uh, support, and now this was not actually resistance or any old resistance, but this was the new support. 
bang, makes its next big move upwards. So now what I want to do is have a look where we are now. It could be this mark here, but we dip down below, which is currently where it is right now, or it could be this mark. But again, the downside is maybe I put some money in here, and I'm telling I can tell you right now I did. I've invested in some matic, I put some money in there. My downside is yep, maybe it drops down to below here. Could be wrong. It could even come back down and retest this. That is completely possible. But I have still bought it a whole lot cheaper than its old all-time highs, and the upside is a lot more than the downside because I'd be surprised if we came back down below uh, 1,705. Uh, I think this is Satoshi's, yeah, because this is against Bitcoin. Uh, as opposed to, we could go from, where is it now? 2,914 Satoshi's up to 6,665 Satoshi's just to get back to its old all-time high. Most of these, oh, no, that's not true. I'll be careful saying that. But a lot of these good altcoins will outperform Bitcoin, particularly in the next big run. So it's quite possible that it gets up here. No guarantees in life, but look what it's done every single other time. So again, against the US dollar, looks like it's undervalued. Against Ethereum, looks like it's bouncing off an old support level and like it's possibly wanting to make another move upwards. Matic, now against BTC, it just keeps playing out these very familiar patterns. Is Matic about to do the same? Now, we could get a whole lot more sideways action like we did here. I mean, this was sideways for 9th of March to roughly 26th of April. So sideways for you know a good month and a bit. Roughly, you know, you could say we've almost been going sideways since here, since the 13th of July. That's almost a month. Again, we've had some chop soaring action here, but around about a month worth of sideways action could go for a little bit longer. But I think Matic looks really, really good. If I'm going to have to place some sort of bets, and again, I don't like to think of it like betting, but it is a little bit, you know, not betting on a random horse. I'm just putting my money here because I think the chances are more likely that it makes a move to the upside than I do to the downside. I'm not betting on Matic because Matic's a really good project. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's going to die. So I'm still investing, but I'm trying to find the most beneficial times to invest for me. And that's what it's looking at the moment. All right. Another one of my favorites, Synthetics Network. I've been a little bit bearish about it for a while because of all this regulatory FUD and things like that. But in the end, I think they're going to be fine. They're decentralized as long as they don't go sort of stepping on too many toes. And maybe they have to introduce KYC in that. I don't know. But excuse me, from the charts, it's looking pretty good. Now, again, this is against the US dollar. This is from that uh, low point where it really started to just march upwards. Now, again, we can see. Sorry. Gets to here. Makes a run up, makes a run up, comes back down, tests these levels. Again, this is the trend line that it's been in for a really long time. Now, this could change at any stage, but at the moment, it's just tracking up just below it. I get the feeling like it's ready to go. So on the dollar value, could be looking quite nice. Let's have a look at it against Ethereum. Now, I haven't drawn any lines on this one. It is doing it for me perfectly. Look at this. Being beaten by Ethereum, being beaten by Ethereum, being beaten by Ethereum. And then all of a sudden, here's where it starts to make its move. 25th of May, 2019, which I kid you not, is about the day that I first bought it. Somewhere around about there. And look how it just did. Boom, way outperformed. Came back down. And now look, old resistance becomes support. Boom, makes, makes another big move. And again, the dead cat bounce, it comes back down. And I'm, I don't even have any lines on here. Look at where the price is right now. Look where it keeps bouncing off. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean it can't go lower. I still believe in synthetics. I believe it's a good project. So could it maybe have to come back down here and retest? Absolutely. So we're at 31,923 guay. And it could come down to 26,561 guay, thereabouts. That is not a whole lot in Guay. 
and look at the upside compared to that. Now, again, the downside could be we have to come back down here and maybe we have to come back way down here against ETH. This is all possible, but still the downside is nowhere near what the upside could be. Now, I didn't put a whole lot of money into synthetics. It wasn't my biggest bet. Uh, Matic was. And again, I don't like to call them a bet, but play, that's a, a better way, better investment, because they are looking like they are just bouncing off old resistance levels, using them as support. So I think Synthetics Network is looking good. All right, let's have a look at it against Bitcoin then. And again, a very similar chart. Old kind of resistance becomes support, 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 makes its next move up. Old resistance, and these are just thereabouts. Again, they're not exactly sort of support. Dip below, but again, dip below and bounce off it perfectly. Bouncing off it perfectly. Dip below, bouncing off it perfectly. So look where we are. We're a little bit above, but again, you could even use this red line. I mean, have a look at it. There's multiple touch points here. So for me, synthetics against both the dollar, Ethereum, and Bitcoin is looking pretty good. So I was happy to put some more money into synthetics. Matic was my biggest play. That's where I de uh, deployed uh, most of my cash that I had available. Uh, not I've got cash sitting on the side, but I'm waiting for bigger dips. But the cash that I sort of, my DCA, I put most of my DCA money into Matic. So let's have a look at Aave. Aave is also doing something very similar. Here's the average line. Again, you can see the touch points playing out. Bounced off it perfectly, bounced off it perfectly, bounced off it perfectly. Uh, you started to use it as support, uh, support and resistance, support and resistance. So against the dollar, Aave looks like it's pretty good. A similar kind of thing. I mean, it's been ranging for almost a month, just going sideways. The 6th of August, we're now on the 4th of September. Look at this, sideways, 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 sideways. And yep fell off but that was because this is that big market correction that everyone saw you could really say that this has been traveling almost sideways since the 21st of may not exactly we had that downside started to make its way back up and now again old support and resistance it's still acting as resistance at the moment but i get the feeling like this will eventually break above it and then start to make its next move up so against the dollar still looks all right looks like it might be undervalued what about against eth let's have a look Again, I've not drawn anything on here. Old resistance point being used as support. Wicked through, but basically support. Kind of broke through a little bit, but ended up being support. Didn't quite get down to it, support. It's perfect support down there. And now look where it is right now. Sitting right on that line. Now again, could this come down to here? Absolutely, but again, what's the downside? The downside is 1,009 guay to 884 guay. Thereabouts, fair enough. Maybe it has to come right down to its old all-time low to 649 guay. As opposed to, it's a sitting at 1,000 guay and it could get up to 3,213 guay. So that's against Ethereum, and Ethereum is going up at the same time. All right, let's check it against Bitcoin. Again, this is an old uh, chart that I've had for quite some time. This is now Aave against Bitcoin. Uh, outperformed it, and again, a couple of support and re well, actually resistance points used as support, used as support, used as support, used as support, made its next all time high. Old resistance points used as support, used as support. Here we can see support and resistance. And now look where it is. It doesn't look as good when we go against the Bitcoin chart, but what it does look like is it's making its way back down. And again, look where it is right now though. This could be the bottom because it's touching perfectly over there, but it could come down to here. Again, what is the downside against Bitcoin? Maybe I go from 7,858 uh, Satoshis down to 7,333 Satoshis. You could wait for a better net, better entry point, but it's no guarantees that it will make it down to, down to here. But it's also possible that it comes down to here. But for me, again, Aave was looking pretty good, so I did put a couple of dollars into Aave. 
Right, what I want to let you know is that I actually put all this stuff a number of days ago. So here is my uh, Twitter, and I did these back on the 1st of September. So these are a couple of days old, these ones. I just uh, redone them. These aren't old charts. These were the old ones. These are all the new ones. But if you want to go, follow me at, uh, at the number one under slash man's journey. Uh, I do a lot of stuff. I won't say a lot, but I do enough stuff like this on Twitter anyway. And this is how you get it immediately. Otherwise, you've got to wait for my one daily update uh, on YouTube. So look, that's some of the things I look at. I looked at, I should say. And again, I did. I put money into Matic. I put money into Synthetics. And I put money uh, into Aave as well. So they look pretty good at the moment. Absolutely could be more downside before there is some upside. But the upside potential just looked a whole lot better than the downside. And again, last but not least, I just want to say that is never financial advice. If you follow what I'm doing, just accept that you might get it wrong, that it might be wrong. Not you get it wrong. I mean, it'll be you as well. But also me, and I've got them wrong before. But all right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.